Australia is a technological country. Uh, we have a stable political environment, regardless of who's in power. Uh, we have a educated workforce and abundant natural resources. In that context, my question was, uh, why does poverty exist? But having listened to you, perhaps the better question would be, will we ever eliminate poverty? <laughs> okay. Well, there, there are, uh, partly this is a definitional question. I mean, of course you can go back to the Bible, the poor we, you always will have with you, but, but there's a definitional question. There's always going to be somebody at the bottom. Uh, you know, there's always going to be some inequality. We're, we're, we're never going to eliminate inequality, and that's not, one shouldn't confuse what I said, that we have too extreme inequality with the statement that we want complete equality. The two are very different statements, that we have really extreme inequality. The same thing, if you ask, will we always have somebody who has an income, say, less than half the median? You always, almost surely will. But you don't have to have people who are living in deprivation. And that's, that's the difference. You know, to try to say, and deprivation is going to be a relative concept, but there is within any society a, a sense of what are our basic standards. No one has to go without health care. No one should, no child should, you know, nobody should go without adequate nutrition. Uh, probably without some level of adequate housing. You know, what that level is will probably, if you become wealthier, that, that minimum standard may go up. There's still going to be, you know, uh, you wouldn't, might not want to live in the kind of housing you provide at the, at the bottom, but there should be nobody who is really suffering from extreme deprivation in our society. Where I think uh, progressives ought to particularly focus on, though, is childhood deprivation. Because you might say, you know, if somebody decides they don't want to work, they want to, you know, be a ski bum, or that's their decision. But children don't choose their parents. In the United States, almost one out of four children live in families in poverty. Uh, that shouldn't exist in a, in a, in a well-off country. And you were describing the characteristics of Australia. One of, the, one of the most disturbing things about natural resource-rich countries, you probably heard of the paradox of the natural resource curse, that countries with a lot of resources typically don't grow as fast, and you're an exception, and, and, and Norway is an exception. It's also the case that you would have thought that countries with a lot of natural resources should have more equality or should have no poverty. Because after all, who owns the natural resources? The people do. And if you tax savings and labor, people might not save as much, might not work as much. If you tax iron ore or oil, the iron ore doesn't say, I'm going to get really mad at you. I'm going to go to another country. <laughs> uh, the oil doesn't go on strike. <laughs> right? It's there. <laughs> and so my view is you ought to be taxing, taxing these natural resources at 100%. Uh, when I say you, you ought to get 100% of what we call the natural resource rent, uh, that those rents belong to the people. Now, that says, what do we mean by the rent? It's the value of the resource minus the efficient cost of extraction. And everything else ought to go to the people. It seems, it seems obvious uh, that, that that ought to be the case. Your previous government attempted to move in that direction. Not surprisingly, those who own those natural resources, I mean, you know, who are making the, those rents, we're not enthusiastic about uh, that particular move. You get a Nobel Prize in understatement. <laughs> um, but from an economic point of view, it was absolutely the right thing to do. And uh, you, you should understand that uh, your attempts to do so have really inspired other countries, even though you might say 
you've learned a hard political lesson. Um, Israel uh, had uh, let its uh, leased its oil offshore, oil and gas fields offshore, to an American company. Um, and I won't say whether there was corruption or not, but at royalties that were uh, unjustifiable, unjustifiably low. Um, this is a really uh, interesting case because, not surprisingly, uh, the U.S. government ambassador tried to put pressure on the uh, Israeli government not to renegotiate those. And I had to make some speeches about governments, the U.S. government not intervening in, in activities of other countries on behalf of oil, mining companies to embarrass them to, to back off on that, on that particular effort. The net result of this was that the Israeli parliament passed legislation that basically, uh, you might say, renegotiated the contracts <laughs> and increased the royalties uh, multiple fold. Thank you.